Merry Christmas and welcome to a worship here at First Lutheran. We're so happy that you are here with us wherever it is you may be. We begin with our call to worship today. I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. Glory to God in highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. confess our make our confession and receive God's forgiveness Lord of Christmas peace we have done wrong we have tarnished the gift you gave freely we have buried you so deeply in our hearts the world does not see you we have not followed Christ we have ignored your teachings we have lived lives of apathy against your love we have built fences and fortresses to push people away and we have silenced the screams of those in need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from our sin. Free us to a life lived in joy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, the God who promised never to leave us or forsake us has come to us in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. He binds up the brokenhearted, heals all the infirmities, and relieves our burden of sin. While it is true that we have sinned, it is a greater truth that in Christ Jesus we are forgiven. God has shown his love for us in that while we were sinners, Christ died and rose for us. Arise, shine, for his light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Thanks be to God. Well, friends, thank you for being with us on this Christmas, wherever it is that you might be. We are so happy that you chose to worship with us in this way. We are coming out of our Advent season where we talked about a weary world rejoicing. And we worked through four weeks to get to that place where we could be prepared to rejoice. Rejoice at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, it got me thinking a little bit about our Christmas story. You know, really this Christmas story is that historical story it's a story that causes us to look back. But in the life of Jesus, it's more than simply looking back at that night in which he was, in which he was born. The life of Jesus is a life that makes us be forward-looking, right? So I, I thought of it this way, looking back, but you and I are also being called to look forward. And I want us to think about that today as we reflect on this well-known story, 
the story of the birth of Jesus. Now, I chose to use a different translation than maybe some of you are used to, to, uh, to hear that Christmas story. So let's begin the story. This is from Luke 2, and we're using the message translation of the Bible. Here's what it says. About that time, Caesar Augustus ordered a census to be taken throughout the empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. Everyone had to travel to his own ancestral hometown to be counted for. So Joseph went from the Galilean town of Nazareth up to Bethlehem in Judea, David's town, for the census. As a descendant of David, he had to go there. He went with Mary, his fiancée, who was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to a son, her firstborn. She wrapped him in a blanket and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the hostel. Think about that for a moment. Think about this story, this incredible story of the birth of the Messiah. You know, it began back in Advent when we talked about the angel coming to Mary and to Joseph and to Mary's cousin, right? Talking about this incredible birth that was to happen. This plan of God. Now, if God is behind all of this, and we know God is, wouldn't it stand to reason that God would have this planned out in such a way that when it was time for Mary to give birth, Mary would have a nice, comfortable bed to rest? And that Jesus would have a nice, warm home to be brought into. It's not how it worked. And I think there's a good reason for that. You know, Jesus came into the world, and it starts with people who have no room for him. No room to welcome the Messiah. Things haven't changed all that much to today. There's a lot of folks today that don't have a whole lot of room or time for Jesus. But even into that, God comes. You see, God doesn't need everything perfect. God just needs people willing to listen. God just needs people willing to receive. You know, I think it's great that Jesus comes into the world in such an imperfect way because Jesus is coming as the savior of an imperfect world. But it makes me think about what is it that really takes up our space? What's living in that space inside of you? That space that Jesus has come to live in. That space in which Jesus can occupy and be that ever real presence in your life. See, that's what he desires. That's what the love of Christ desires, that Christ can be with us. Because the main reason why God sent Jesus, the main reason why God becomes human in the form of Christ is because God wants to be reconciled with you and me and all of humanity. This is why Jesus comes. Jesus comes in such an imperfect time and in such an imperfect way to an imperfect world because a perfect God says, I love you even in your imperfection. But what's taking up that room? Think about it. You know, really, don't just think about it. Look back. Look back at your life. Look back at what's really monopolizing your time. What are your priorities? And where exactly does Jesus land? Where does your faith land in that list of priorities? In this time of Christmas, yes, we can celebrate the birth of Jesus, but if that's all we do at Christmas time, then all we're doing is looking back. We're not moving forward. We're not doing what it is that Jesus came into this world to show us what to do. We're not looking ahead. We're not looking at all the different possibilities that God might have. 
You see, when we do that, when we make room, something incredible happens. We begin to sense a change. And there was a change that happened in the Christmas story. It was a change that happened to a group of men out on the countryside, watching over the sheep. The shepherds would become the ones who would first be forever changed by seeing Jesus. Our story continues in Luke. There were shepherds camping in the neighborhood. They had set night watches over their sheep. Suddenly, God's angels stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them. They were terrified. The angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born in David's town, a savior who is the Messiah and master. This is what you, you are to look for, a baby wrapped in a blanket and lying in a manger. At once, the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises. Glory to God in the heavenly heights. Peace to all men and women on earth who please him. As the angel choir withdrew into the heaven, the shepherds talked it over. Let's get over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left running and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met that the angels had, what the angels had said about this child. All who heard the shepherds were impressed. Do you see? Do you see what happens when somebody makes room for Jesus? Makes room inside for Jesus to come and dwell. You become changed. And that change is so dramatic that you want to go and tell others. You encounter this real Jesus and things begin to change. Friends, if Christmas is simply about looking back, we're missing out. We're missing out on perhaps the greatest of all gifts that come from Christ. That is that opportunity to be changed. Today, in our culture, in our society, people focus on Christmas for the gifts, for the parties, for Santa Claus. They don't focus on the birth of Christ. And more importantly, they don't understand the gift of being changed. And the reason is, is because we're not witnessing. Because if we were doing a good job of witnessing, as the shepherds did, we would be moving forward, and more and more people would remember what this time of year is truly all about. But if we're simply looking back at the event and not accepting the radical transformation that happened afterwards, we're not being part of the forward movement, that movement that Jesus calls each and every one of us to. We are called to witness. Let me ask you, who first told you? Who first told you about Jesus? Maybe it was a grandparent. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was because you were brought to church and you began to hear the stories of Christ. Regardless of who it was, Somebody was responsible for witnessing to you. So how many are you going to tell? How many are you going to witness to, just like the shepherds, to go and share, to go and say to them, friend, come and see. Come and experience what I experience when I join in the family that is the church. 
the family that is the body of Christ, where I get to hear stories that are relevant to what we're going through today, where I go and I experience a culture in which questions and doubts are welcomed and patience and love and care is shown. We were called into the Christmas story, friends, a long time ago, not merely to look back, but to understand what it meant to share it. To share it with the enthusiasm of a bunch of shepherds. To go and tell others, you want to be part of changing the way our culture and society is, then you and I need to join together. Join together in sharing and inviting. Join together in witnessing what it means to have Emmanuel, God with us, each and every day of our lives. Oh yes, Christmas is a wonderful time of year. It's a wonderful day of celebration, but it cannot remain merely one day. For the Christian, Christmas is every day of our lives. And we want to share that. May you share this wonderful gift of Christmas in the many days and years ahead. May you be excited like the shepherds in witnessing and telling others that Emmanuel, God is with us. Merry Christmas, friends. join together as we share and confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Friends, as we come to the end of our service on this Christmas, let me offer to you and to all words of prayer this morning. Good and gracious God, you looked at an imperfect world and said, I want to understand it better. You looked at a humanity that had fallen away from understanding and knowing you, and you said, I want to become one of them. And into this imperfect 
and broken world. You came as a babe. You came as an infant. You came as Jesus. And you started in an imperfect place with people who didn't have room for you. But you, you, God, had room for them. You, God, have room for us. On this Christmas, Lord, may we be like the shepherds. Be like the shepherds and desire to witness this exciting news each and every day of our lives. May Christmas not be merely one day on a calendar. May Christmas be an everyday celebration for us as people of faith, as we go out and share with others. We thank you. We thank you, God, for becoming Emmanuel and being with us. Now be with us today and always. We celebrate this in the name of Jesus, your Savior, our Savior, your Son, our Lord, He who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you, be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Once again, thank you for worshiping with us. May you have a wonderful Christmas, and may Christmas live in you today and every day of your lives as you remember that you are the church wherever you may be.